Hi, it's Carrie from Classic Cottage Art and Antiques in Bowling Green, Virginia, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Creating at Classic Cottage. Today, I'm going to show you how to take an old table and repurpose it into a much more functional piece of furniture for your home. We're going to just do the build today, and I'll show you the painting process on the next video. So stay tuned and see how easy this is. So I decided to take this old Jacobean, Jacobean dining table and turn it into a sofa table. So I removed the frame there that you see the legs attached to first, just a few nails and screws and it came right up. And then what I did was I had to remove the, um, the frame there with the holes in it next to the side for us to be able to cut it down. Those rails actually held the, um, the leaves in it. And there you see I removed them all completely. So the next step is going to be to cut the table down to size. I wanted to make it the size that would be good for a console or sofa table. And that was pretty easy. My husband helped me do that. So here we are measuring to make sure that we get the right width or the right depth, actually. As you can see, there's quite a bit. It's almost in half there. And he's taking a nice long square and marking it so that he can cut it with a circular saw. Um, just make sure if you're using any power tools that you use safety precautions, make sure you have eye protection and that sort of thing. So he's marked it, and now he's going to cut it. As you can see, it's quite wide. It's actually the half of a whole, it's actually the half of a very long dining room table. The other half was actually converted into a desk. So he's double checking his measurements now. We want to make sure we cut it just right because we want to preserve the back half that we cut off to use as the piece that fills in the gap on the back side. He's going to make sure and um, he's going to leave it on the concrete to cut because it's nice and secure there and won't wobble off. And the saw blades don't all go all the way through. The table is too deep for the saw blades to go all the way through. So here he is cutting on that line now. And you can see there's going to be quite a lot of wood left that we can um, use for the backing. The beauty of this is that it's going to be the exact width that we need because it's coming off the table anyways. Great, so the next step is to continue the cut on the trim. The saw blade was not deep enough to cut all the way through, so he's having to make a second cut on each side. He's transferring the line just to make sure it's in the correct position. Once that's done, the table will be in two pieces, and we will use the part that was cut off to then cut another small section the depth of the table trim. Now what we're doing is we're separating the stretchers that connect the legs of the table. Uh, we didn't want to have the three leg configuration anymore. Um, so we needed to disconnect the stretchers from each leg. He's using his multi-tool with a metal cutting blade because there are nails in that those stretchers were attached with nails. Um, again, be sure to wear your protective eyewear when you're using any kind of power tool like this. Um, metal pieces could be flying. You don't want that to fly in your eye. So he's going to cut the stretchers off of each one. And this tool is really cool. It's, um, it's called a multi-tool and it actually vibrates to do the cutting rather than sawing up and down. It's a very handy tool to have. So now that the stretchers have been disconnected, we can cut down the frame.
We're going to be reusing the frame. It just needs to be cut down to the same size as the table top. So there you see, they're all disconnected. And later on, we will disconnect the stretchers from the other two legs. Right now, we're just concerned that we want to cut the table frame to size. So again, using the circular saw, we're going to cut right along the line where the two frame pieces connect. Reason is we want to cut down the short piece to, and reuse the long piece for the back legs. So there are the tools that we've used, some of them, and there's the leg that we've disconnected from the frame. There's the frame that we're getting ready to cut down to size. And there's the frame once we've cut it down. This will allow us a base to attach the legs to. The front two legs are still attached, which is great. We'll just have to create back legs for it. And here's a close up of where those were disconnected from the leg. That'll have to be sanded down before I can paint it. So now we're ready to reattach the supports that will hold up the frame for the legs. We cut those down from the original length that held the, the leaves of the table. We attach those with screws. We put three in and we put the little blocks in to make sure that it didn't have any rocking so it'd be secure. We attached the back panel with nails from the top and the sides and then we have a finished top. But it's in pretty bad shape so I want to show you what I do to get rid of the veneer on this tabletop. Uh, some older pieces do have nice wood underneath. It doesn't matter because I'm going to paint it anyway. So here is one technique to remove veneer. I use a heat gun. Just be careful. It gets super hot. Um, you're going to do it in a fairly, really, fairly well ventilated area. Just take the heat gun and heat up the veneer. What happens is it, is it loosens the glue that's holding the veneer on. And you take a metal putty knife. I like the wide one. And then you just work your way up underneath of the veneer and it comes off. Another method I have tried in the past is put wet rags on the veneer overnight. It also loosens the glue, but I just didn't want my wood to be wet. So this way worked for me. It took a little bit of doing. And one thing you want to be careful of is don't... Um, get your heat gun too close to the veneer because in my case it actually melted the glue and made it worse. So I ended up using an orbital sander with a low grit sandpaper to remove the rest of it. Also uh, give your heat gun a rest every now and then so that it doesn't overheat. One more tip when doing the heat gun method to remove veneer is don't force it. Um, make sure you find a piece that's loose and work your way up that way. If you force it, you risk tearing the wood underneath, which then you would have to do a lot of repairing and things that you probably don't want to do. If you just take your time and just slowly let the glue heat up and melt and then put your putty knife underneath, you'll have a lot better result than if you try to chip and force it. The other thing is you could actually cause gouges in your wood underneath, and you don't really want to do that if you're going to paint or stain your top. Just another tip. Here it is. All the veneer has been removed and the sides have been sanded as well. I sanded with several grits of uh, sandpaper starting with a low grit all the way up to a 220, getting it ready for 
the next process, which I'll share with you in another video. So here we go. We're going to finish the build. So I wanted to use things I had around the house for this build. Uh, I only had two fancy legs, three fancy legs really, but I needed four and only had three. So I looked around to see what I could find to make an extra two legs. Turns out I had this hat rack laying around that just wouldn't stand up straight. So we cut that down. We took the hooks off. We took the bottom off. Then we cut it down to size. We needed to make it the right height. We used the um, miter saw for that. And so then I used my favorite tool. So now what I'm going to do is, this was the original um, part of the legs that we're not using, the stretcher type part. But you see how it's got this detail, maybe I can find it, there it is, the detail right here. Well, I'm going to try to mimic that in this piece here that we've cut from the old um, hat rack that we weren't using that um, it split and we couldn't get it to work right so hey it works just, just what we need so our goal is to get this look and we're going to do that with the router and a router table this is a tool that is my favorite tool actually but you need to be super careful with it and follow all the precautions of safety that you're going to need for this uh, it can hurt you really bad so just be careful and um, let's give it a shot and see what happens. I have it already set to the depth. This is a cove bit. I don't remember the measurement, but, um, and I've got a piece of metal here. I've got to be very careful that I don't hit with my bit, as you can see. So my husband was correcting me because he's really good at this kind of stuff. To this, going to miss it if I do it that way on this side. Okay, he's shaking his head yes. Okay, so he's going to film while I'm, he's going to double check my, measurements here. It'll just miss it, he says. So he's going to film while I am As you can see, it did. I had to go through a couple of passes because the the fence is here. I kind of got a little squirrely on that. But look, we've straightened it out. So in order for me to get the right cut this time for the next one, my husband's good with this because I always get it mixed up. I go this way. So basically, I flipped it this way, and now it's going to hit the fence there. All right. So this is the underside of the table. As you can see, we've reused the supports that were there originally. And we're gonna hear the screw gun here in a minute. Um, and we've actually added these supports for the back. We took part of the top that we cut down, as you may have seen earlier, and we made a back for this. So it works really nicely. We kind of really didn't use too much of anything we didn't already have. So now we're replacing the legs for the front. So instead of using the original nails that came in, we decided to go ahead and put screws in there to hold it versus the nails. We've also put glue in there.
And he's going to, to screw at an angle so to keep the legs on there. He's, he pre-drilled in order not to split. This part was old and chipped away anyways, but there's still enough board left to hold it onto the leg, as you can see here. So we're almost finished with the reconstruction of this table. We'll be very careful to make sure that it's exactly straight up and down so the table doesn't wobble and so that the, the leg isn't kicked inward like so. Be very careful not to split the old wood. So you can see now it's on there really good and tight and there is plenty of wood even though that cracked out. So he's, he's screwed this screws in here. What size screws? Those are the screws that he used. Premium wood screws. They're exterior, but that's what we had on hand. So before we can put on the back legs, we actually need to take off this center leg that we thought we were going to keep on, but we changed our mind. <clears throat> So what he's doing now is just removing the nails that are holding this on. Sorry, it's a little loud. But he raises the nail up with a flathead screwdriver and then takes, um, in this case, it looks like side cutters and works it up. You could also use just a regular pair of pliers. This has got a nice V to it. And he has to take out all of the nails that are around it, and they were held in very securely because this is actually got an indentation where the round part is actually seated inside of the, the base, which holds it a lot more securely. Always wear protective eye eye protection when you're doing this in case something should um, pop up and hit you in the eye. You don't want to lose your eye or have any problems there. Whenever you're working with tools, always, always wear protective gear. Um, if you're sanding or something, always be sure to wear a, a, a mask or respirator. And if you're using anything where you're cutting or hammering or anything, always wear protective eye gear just to be safe. And just like that, you see how it is, um, was seated in there and this is where all the nails were. And so he had to remove all of those in order to take the leg off. All right, next step. <coughs> so as you can see, we have we have reattached the legs with screws instead of the nail. I think it's a lot more sturdy with the screws. These are two inch, actually exterior wood screws. It's what we had on hand. We didn't really want to um, go out and buy something. And he used two different drill bits. One to make the hole for the screw, the other, where'd it go? The other one to um, make the hole bigger so that he could countersink the screw so that it doesn't get in the way when we attach it to the base here. But now the front legs are attached and the, the bottom legs that we created over here are attached with a nice new detailing. This is right here is where the hole was for the third leg. We decided that wouldn't be sturdy enough. So we went ahead and made these other legs. Again, from stuff we had laying around. I collect a lot of stuff. Never know when you're gonna need something to build something, right? So now let's go ahead and attach it to the base that we've made. 
the base, as you recall, we reused these supports from the original table. See, this is where the leaf would have, or the mechanism to make the table bigger to put the leaf in would have been. And we cut this down, we cut this down. We actually made some more um, little blocks here for support. And we used this was part of the table. Remember, we cut this down. And this is the back. Again, we didn't use anything we didn't already have. So let's go ahead and put these legs on the right way. Okay. So in this frame here that we're using that the legs were attached to was part of the original and we just cut it down. Oops, let me scoot here. And this is this is looks like to be oak and it's a very hard wood and it's it's strong <laughs> now we're going to measure to make sure we're meeting him i'm filming he's measuring we're going to make sure it's exactly centered And I wanted to keep this shape of the for the front. This is so cool. You can do this. You can take a table that you're not going to use for something else. As you saw in the beginning, this is an old dining room table. Whoops, an old dining room table that actually the other half of it's been cut down and made into a desk, and it's at the shop right now. This is going to be a sofa table, or a console table, an entryway table. Um, this video is going to just take you through the build and I'll be doing the finishing on a separate video. Have some really cool ideas for finishing, especially the top of this. I really like um, the detail here, otherwise it would have just been a straight leg. I do need to fill in these holes here where the hooks from the old um, hat rack were. And I'm also going to need to fill in these holes with some extra mud. Take those same screws and we're just going to reattach it to the, the braces here. Again, screws are, for my money, are a little bit more sturdy and they might hold a little bit better than nails. Nails, for me, tend to wobble over time and this did move a little bit when you see it's awful, but I'm going to use some of the same holes that were there, but we're also going to pre-drill. Just hold on. Double check our measurements before we screw in the second side. Because it did shift just slightly when he put the screw in there. He likes to make sure it's in there nice and tight. And it's nice and flush. So now we need to attach the back side. One thing you should know about when my husband builds something, it's not coming apart. <laughs> huh. It will be very sturdy. So as I was talking, I wasn't helping like I was supposed to be, and I noticed that another good reason to use screws in an application like this is that um, we discovered this board and that board must not be the same size. So the backboard here was actually off. So he was able to unscrew it, and now we can correct it to be the right distance. Another good reason to use screws rather than nails. Nails would have been hard. If you wanted to stay true to traditional construction methods, um, nails would have been the way to go. 
for these flathead screws. Now we're going to attach the sides here. So there she is. A reconstructed table. You can see we kept the that's how you pronounce it Jacobean style legs in the front but we created new ones in the back there and I removed as you saw the um, veneer that was on here because it was chipped and this is actually not the greatest looking wood but I've got a really cool treatment for that and I'm going to show you in a different video but I just wanted to show you you can really transform something that you might not care for the style of it into something that you can use it's really a very nice table it's a really good size now all i have to do is do some uh, filling of holes and things and then the next video will be on the finishes so if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe to our channel please like the video and subscribe to our channel and um I'll see you on the next video with how to finish this really cool uh, console table.